You're driving back home, cliffside through Big Sur, when a small animal jumps in front of your car. Quickly, you swerve out of the way. You wake up with water at your knees and sharp pains all through your chest. You realize you've fallen 200 feet and your car is now crashed, sinking into the Pacific Ocean. You need to swim shore quickly, but before you go, you think of three items you can bring with you to shore, but you can only carry one. Which will help you survive. Wait, okay, what? What are we doing? What? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so over the past few days, I've collected some real-life survival stories of people who lived thanks to one item they luckily had on hand. What you guys are here to do is guess which of the three I give you it was. So we're drowning right now. Same scenario I just gave. Which item do you bring to shore? A gallon of water, a water hose, or some glass from the shattered window? What? Water hose? How big's the glass? I mean, the pieces are grabbable, but glass can be useful. No, I'm, I'm thinking water hose. I feel like if you have sharp pains on your chest, you're gonna have a hard time breathing. How the heck are you gonna swim all the way to the shore? Use a water hose, put it like put it in your mouth, <laughs> and then use it as a snorkeler. I will take some glass, but depending on how big the glass is, is it like just like shards of glass, or is it like a hefty piece, you know? Hefty pieces and shards. I will take some hefty glass. Okay, we'll go with glass. You grab some of the shattered glass off your lap and climb out the window. Making it to shore, you realize this has given you nothing but badly cut hands. What? In your already injured state, adding unusable hands to the list is too much and you pass away after two days, unable to even try to scale the cliff. You said that there were hefty pieces of glass. What is this? You grab sharp glass. What do you expect? You know, I don't have to... You know what? Let's just, let's just keep going. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the correct answer was water hose. In 2018, Angela Hernandez survived this experience. She tried to get a gallon of water that she thought she had, but it actually... Uh, didn't exist. So after a few days stuck on the beach, she traveled down south and found moss dripping fresh water. She then used the water hose to collect it. And after about a week stuck on the beach, she was found and airlifted to the hospital. Okay, so what you're saying, Hart, is that in order to keep from being thirsty, you gotta have hose on you. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> keep hose on you at all times. <laughs> ah, okay, gotcha. Makes so much sense. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, next one. You are the cook on a tugboat off the coast of Nigeria. Haha, <laughs> tugboat. You're the first to wake up because you need to make everyone breakfast while they're still sleeping. Doors locked to their chambers. As you walk to go to the bathroom, an ocean swell hits the ship, immediately capsizing it and sinking it into the ocean. Art, why is everything about water? I don't like water. <laughs> <laughs> With your surroundings flipped and shaking, you see a few items floating in the rising water. Which do you grab? A key box? A mattress? or lantern. Lantern, because, you know, you go underwater and it's dark. What? How do you know where to go? Oh, so do you know how lanterns work? Is it fire or? Yeah, it's it... a fire lantern. Oh, what the <laughs> heck? What? Okay, I guess key box so that you can open doors and then get out. Oh, yeah. Wait, actually, yeah, that's not a bad answer, host. That's your final answer? Yeah, key box, key box. Okay, key box. You grab the key box and ruffle through it and eventually find a key to the exit hatch. Yeah! Opening it up, water immediately floods the room rapidly. Oh. Unable to do anything against the rushing current, you join your crew in passing 100 feet below the surface. Okay, so the correct answer is a mattress. You get on top of the mattress as the room fills with water, thinking you're only preventing the inevitable. What? But shockingly, the water stops rising, and you are now stuck in a four-foot air pocket 100 feet below the surface. It's dark, cold, but you don't panic. 20 hours back. 40 hours pass, 60 hours pass, and long after all hope is gone, you see a light from under the water. A diving crew has arrived and you are the only survivor. No way. What? This was Harrison Oakney's story Holy from 2013, crap. where he was actually stuck underwater for that long, and they even have the video footage of the divers finding him. What the hell? Damn, what the that hell? Sounds miserable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are survival stories, man. They're not really, uh, Walk in the park. <laughs> You're a challenge runner, and you've decided to take on the Sahara Ultra Marathon. Carrying all your supplies on your back, you will cross over 156 miles over six days. On the fourth day, you're in between the third and fourth checkpoint, with 57 miles in between them. 20 miles in, unexpected winds pick up, and a sandstorm begins. Trying to keep your seventh place standing, you continue to run, but the winds continue until nightfall, and by then, you realize you have no idea where you are. After a day's travel lost in the desert, you're out of water, and this backpack is only making you heavier. You decide to leave it, but before you do, you grab what will help you. Which item do you take? Wet wipes? a map and compass, or the empty bottle. I'm think, okay, do we have to piss into the bottle? Wet wipes. 
Yes. You can't drink that though. Really? No, it's chemicals. Oh. Yeah, no, I thought it was gonna be something like, oh, you have an empty bottle. Pit Wait, I can't bring all of them? For the sake of the existence of this content, no. Aw. I'm thinking bottle. I'm thinking wet wipes. Oh, so what are you gonna do with wet wipes? So, wipe your sweat or like wipe the dews off of cactuses in the morning and then like drink it. Counterpoint? What? Because I don't want to drink pit. All right, I need, I need, I need a final answer from y'all. What do y'all choose? Bottle. I, I'll go with bottle. God, I want to drink pit. You take the empty bottle and keep walking. Surely I'll find a water source eventually, you think to yourself. As the sun rises and sets, you grow ever more deteriorated, eventually collapse from dehydration. If only you had a little more water, you could have made it to the oasis a few miles ahead. You can't drink <laughs> wet wipes! Whatever you like to say, you that's what he did. You can't drink wet wipes! Uh, sucking out the moisture of the wet wipes, you make the extra miles to an oasis and drink to your heart's content. This re-energizes you to get far enough to footprints leading you back to civilization. So, the real question is, did he finish the marathon? Well, kinda. So, this story was Maru Pasperi's, and he actually traveled 180 miles in the wrong direction. <laughs> what? Uh, I really couldn't go into much detail of this guy's story because it was... It was just brutal. What did he do? He piss drinking. Oh my. That's all I really got for um, the video. I would highly recommend you check out these stories as these were all real, but our accountings aren't entirely accurate for the sake of brevity. But um, yeah. How do we end this? Um, if you were stranded on a deserted island, Hart, how long would it take you to drink your piss?